Hi, it's Ray from Pro Shaper in Charlton, Mass. I'm back. I was sick for with a bad cold and a lot of uh, extended learning students here and it's difficult to do the videos with extended learning students wanting my attention. So, we're back, 9C, where we left off. This is the panel that goes right here. We left off, got a lot of the area development happening here. Put the flexible shape pattern on it. We've got the little homes, that's the, where the magic marker locates it on the corners. You need at least two or three of them. This is all fitting nice and tight here. But we have a little bit of a problem. Right here, it is loose. And what that tells me when reading a flexible shape pattern, because I had this out in severe out of arrangement before, when I put it in arrangement, um, it revealed this. That wasn't uh, as readily uh, apparent when I had it in the, in the tight curl. So I'm a little overdeveloped here, so I have to knock this up a little bit here with the hammer and then get that touching again. That's the first priority. When you're reading the flexible shape, shape pattern, you always work on the worst spot first, the spot that needs the most work. So that needs a little work there. And over here, it's a little loose too, right? Here it's tight, and here it's loose. So it needs a little bit more area right in that spot right there. So, but this is the worst spot right here, so I'm gonna pound that up a little bit and then wheel it out. Now, you have two options. When you have a situation like this, you can wheel that up but it seems to be a lot slower when you do it that way. So I prefer just to do a little hammering or malleting and bring that up a little bit, go a little bit at a time. Now it's on the edge, so I'm going to hit it right on the edge and bring this edge up. I hit it a little bit and then check it. And it's no different that if you were reading a blueprint on a lathe and you're checking the diameter on a shaft and you have to cut uh, 80 thousandths more off, you don't cut 80 thousandths in one go. You do it in a little bit at a time. So yeah, you can see this little motion right there. That's where I got to come up some more. So I'm going to tiptoe to the, the finish line here. I don't want to go too fast, just like cutting on a lathe. Cut some nice little 30 thousandths cuts rather than a heavy cut. Hit it and then check it. Now I'm hitting just on the edge until it touches and then it will fill in after. So now you saw it was almost an inch there. Now it's only about a quarter of an inch of gap right here. So I got to go a little bit more right there. Check it again. Yep, still needs more. I'm going to hit it a little harder. Now it's just about there. So I can maybe wheel the rest of it. Now I'm going to hit maybe some of the other spots here too. It needs a little bit in here. Right there's a little, little low. I'll put that right on the edge of the bag. a little 
here. And then this corner right here, we'll give this up, get this up a little bit here too. That's all fitting good. I still could use a little more there, I think. A little bit more here. Soon. I think I'm going to give it one more here. Yeah. And we'll wheel that out. I want to get all the mallet marks out here. Now I just cleaned the wheel before we turn on the camera and it, it seems like there's an oil on it or something. It's pretty weird. It's leaving like a film or something. I'm going to wash it with some acetone. you got to keep the wheels clean at all times. Now what we're searching for here is uh, getting that area value correct based on what the flexible shape pattern is telling us. And then after we get the area value, we'll be setting the arrangement value. And then it'll start to look like what we want it to look like. The first thing I gotta do is, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a film here. I don't know where that film is coming from. So I'm going to wash it with acetone. Let me get some acetone. All right, we got the wheel cleaned off. Uh, I don't know what that stuff was. Uh, planished it out a little bit. Still needs a bunch. But I think I still need to come up some more here. This is still reading a little loose here, so I might be a little more aggressive with it. So it's a tapered effect. Um, 
the issue here was I probably put a little bit too much area here and I can repair it by just bringing this edge up a little bit because the pattern was off and I call that a tent pole when it's touching here and it's loose over here because it's been overdeveloped there so you got to bring this up and it'll be like a ski ramp essentially a little bit more and more and more so there's a tapering effect so you hit mostly on the edge and then you bring it in this is an issue that happens uh, with almost all the students is overdeveloping. Uh, it happens uh, quite often on a lot of your panels. You can easily overdevelop no matter what method you're using. You've got to be constantly vigilant and making sure you don't overdevelop. So I still need a little bit more there. You can see that's bouncing here. It's pretty good. It's sort of like that corner, triangular corner there needs to come up some more. So now, um, again, reiterating um, the options. Say you went really crazy and overdeveloped this. This is a, a major problem because I said every student does that overdevelopment. In a perfect, perfect world, you take the panel out of the rack, you cut it, you start developing it, and you develop it perfectly. Meaning, every square inch of that panel has been either shrunk or stretched, depending on what methods you're using, to what it's supposed to be, to be the ideal amount of area development to make the panel that you're trying to make. And in that quest for perfection, you always will make mistakes. You'll be underdeveloped in some areas, overdeveloped in other areas. In this case here, I went here. Now this is very, very common on all panels. Because it's easy to work the center of the panel, because you've got your hands on both sides, it's balanced in the wheel or power hammer, whatever you're using. And it's very easy to dwell in the center of a panel and that's a very common student mistake they focus on that center I call that cleaning the kitchen floor your wife tells you to clean the kitchen floor well the easiest part to clean is right in the center same thing with this it's under the cabinets where the cockroaches are and the dirt and the breadcrumbs that's the hot pot you gotta bend down and get it well when you're doing the edges, it's a little harder to, to do the edges than the center, so it's the same thing. So, if you do do this overdevelopment, if it's minor like this, and this one actually goes a little bit beyond minor, it's kind of a, um, a minor plus goof, not an extreme goof. An extreme one would be you would have to stretch this up quite a bit that would be one fix. The other fix is you can shrink this down. Now uh, on a steel panel I use my shrinking disc. I used to use the shrinking disc on aluminum but uh, now I use exclusively a, my uh, lead shot bags that I make and a slapper. So say this was overdeveloped by you know maybe an eighth of an inch or so which is probably the case here you can take and heat this up with a torch right where it's overdeveloped you're heating probably about a three inch section or so just warming it up remember aluminum melts at about 1250 degrees and it kneels at 750 degrees all you need to do is heat it up to about 400, three or four hundred degrees and what happens is the metal has that little crown already and then the metal will come up like this because of the heat, the thermal expansion. And then what happens is it's in more of a plastic state at this point. So if you hit it with a hammer or a slapper, what happens is the metal will push into itself like this. And you just kind of slap it down and you'll get that little bit of shrinkage. Now you might get a little disturbance in the surface quality, but a real light wheel or planish 
will smooth it out. So that's the way you can shrink in the center of a panel. You can do it in a steel panel. Uh, you can do it with heat in a steel panel. You can, or you can do it sh with a shrinking disc. An aluminum, I prefer now just a hammer, uh, a body hammer, or a slapper with the lead shot bag underneath, giving it a little support. Sometimes you can't put the lead shot bag under there, and it's, it's, it still does a pretty decent job, but it does a better job with the lead shot. So we're opting on this case not to shrink this. We're opting to stretch this edge out. So this is a good example here because it happens so often. Uh, in a perfect world, when I made this panel, I wouldn't make any mistakes at all. But that's how you learn because life is one mistake followed by another mistake and learning how to correct them. So that's what we're doing. We're correcting a little mistake here. And it's a great lesson here in learning how to correct this mistake. Now when you're videoing like this, your concentration is a little upset, so if I was making this as a regular job or something, I probably wouldn't have made the mistake, but when you're videoing, you have to think about a lot of other stuff besides just doing what you're doing. So, okay, that was hammer, hammer marks, or hammer blows worked out pretty good. I'm still a little low right here, but see this is laying down. Remember there was a one inch gap here just a little while ago. So that's, and that's all laying down nice here. I still got a gap in here. I'm going to have to bring that up a little bit. So right here too, I'm going to bring that little corner right there. It needs a little more attention. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now, it's laying down pretty much everywhere here, except for right in here, right in the valley. So, I gotta bring that valley up just a little bit. I'm gonna put it over the edge of the bag. that did. Remember you always have to go back onto your home marks there. Okay so that's a lot better right there. That's all good. Nice, nice. I got a little bit of looseness showing over here. See it's a little overdeveloped right in here. I got to pop that edge up a little bit. And it still needs a little right in here, and I'm going to need more here. Again, when I did that, it affected this a little bit. So, we'll pop this edge up a little. And then, a little more on this valley and back here. Give it a little bit more here too. Alright, I'm going to wheel that out now and see what I got. So the object now is just to planish out all these lumps and bumps.
you notice we're using this, uh, I call it a medium crown wheel. It has about uh, 7 16 contact area and uh, so slight drop off and a heavy radius on the edge. Now I just had an extended learning student. If you look in my video, we posted one yesterday about uh, the Gamun Porsche. Uh, Spencer came up from Maryland and he had that nice buck. If you watch that video, you see the beautiful buck he made. And uh, he made a whole bunch of aluminum panels for him. He got them to some of them about 90% or so, some at about 80% development. He's still working on his uh, finessing the panel. He's coming back again. And uh, he's learned quite a bit, but there's, to learn this craft, there's a lot of things you gotta learn. It takes a little bit to learn it. You don't, you're not gonna learn it overnight. So, he made those panels, I think it was about 9 or 10 panels total he made, fitting them to the buck, and I believe almost every single one of them was all done with just this one anvil, the only anvil he used the whole time. So that's what I like about the, the wheeling, you don't have to change the tooling out too often. So all this work I'm doing now is all backtracking. Uh, if I had paid a little more attention, I wouldn't have had to do this, but it actually works out good for the video to show you how to correct the mistakes because uh, I know when you do the similar panel, you are gonna make the mistake. It's very easy to make mistakes. Now the pressure I have on here is in the middle range. The middle range of pressure uh, will give you uh, additional area value. So every time you're moving, it's, it's uh, squeezing the metal and causing the area value to increase through compression of the, uh, the metal. And aluminum works pretty fast. Now, this is that Chinese saw stuff that's really stiff. And it just seems funny after you work it a little bit, it seems to uh, come alive and uh, becomes a little bit more malleable, which is counter to the general thought. The, the thought generally is the word work hardening, which I kind of don't like that term work hardening at all. Because I find that most of the time, as you work this aluminum or steel, it actually becomes more malleable and user friendly. So this seems to be working pretty nicely right now. I like the finish. It's got a nice finish on it. I'm picking my surface quality up a little bit where I had malleted this and left a lot of those mallet depressions. So the process is always you know, using the, the
the flexible shape pad and all the buck as your blueprint to tell you what to do. You're following that blueprint. Try to follow it as closely as possible. You're always going to make those mistakes. And that's one of the beautiful things of this craft. I probably said it ten times already. Is that this craft is so forgiving. I say also metal and clay are the same thing. Exact same thing. Everybody knows how to work clay. They don't necessarily know how to work metal, but if you know how to work clay, which you use your fingers with, you can figure out how to work metal, sheet metal. It's the same thing, except instead of using your fingers, we're squeezing in between these two rollers. And if we overdevelop in clay, we just fatten it up with a little more clay. If we underdevelop, we thin it in, out a little bit with our fingers, so we have the ability to add and subtract. We have the ability here on sheet metal to both add and subtract at will. If we want more area, we can stretch it and add more area at will. If we want to take area away, we shrink it doesn't matter where, on the edge, in the center of the panel, you can shrink anywhere. Once you get your techniques all down, it's all doable. Now most people think it's the tools. I've probably said this a bunch of times too. It's not the tools. Yes, I have a nice English wheel. Um, it's like if I was uh, going to be a professional artist, painter, portrait painter, or, or landscape painter or something. I, I'm not going to use uh, throwaway one inch wide brushes. I'm going to get myself a nice set of artist brushes or I'm going to make a nice set of artist brushes. So if you want nice planishing, nice shaping ability, you should have a good tool to do it. Now you can take a tool such as the Harbor Freight English wheel and you can tune it and you can actually produce some pretty nice work with that but it has its limitations just like you could take a one inch throwaway brush I suppose you could give it a little haircut and you could make it into an artist brush and uh, maybe get some decent results with it but if you're very, very really serious about it you should uh, maybe start with the less expensive equipment and then work up, but it's not absolutely necessary. You can do a nice job without the super expensive equipment too, as long as it's in tune. Tuning is the most important thing. So you can see that whole surface is pretty nice now. So now we should be close but the panel always surprises you. You don't know what you have until you take your reading. So, okay, what do we got? We're still, look at that, we're still off over here. So that's got to come up some more. Here, tightened up. That's all good here, that's all good. Maybe a little loose right there. But that back corner a little bit loose right in here too. That back section is still, we've got to come up with it some more. Now I'll show you how to take that up with the wheel instead of just with the mallet. Now this is a very common deal on every panel too. Like I said, it's very common to overdevelop a little bit. So we're going to wheel this edge. Now if we wheel this way, what's going to happen is it wants to send the panel over this way a little bit. We want that whole thing to come up like this so it meets the flexible shape pattern. So we can do it this way but it's uh, oftentimes I toast, if I tell a student to do that they'll get in a little trouble. But I want to show what happens here uh, when you wheel just the edge. Now I'm wheeling just the edge but I'm in the center of the wheel. That's where the action takes place. So watch what happens. That edge is, is taut and tight now. And I wheel it, especially I'll pump the pressure up a little bit. 
and what's going to happen is it's going to go into a wave formation. It'll just automatically go into a wave. Well, it's a, it's sort of doing it. It's absorbing it into, it's coming up into here. You get a little bit of wave there. You can see it right there. And because of the wheel, we're working on this part of the wheel. It'll tend to orient this way, and we don't want it to orient that way or arrange that way. We want it to arrange this way. So if you're doing this stretching on the edge, you can do it preferably upside down, and that'll orient it the other way. So let's do this upside down. And when you do it upside down, you have to lift up on it also, like this. So that's stretching it out. And now I'm gonna move inboard a little bit. So I do a bunch of stretches on the edge. This is a linear stretch, essentially. I do a bunch of stretches on the edge and then I come inboard a little bit. Not as much as what I did on the edge, otherwise it just makes the panel worse. So that came up quite a bit there. I'm going to come in a little bit more here and let's see what we got now. Now if I went up too high, all I have to do is work here. So put it back on. Now this is all going to be trimmed off ex anyways. This is all extra material. I, I rightfully should trim a little bit of this off. I got a lot of extra material there. So I'm, I'm making it harder for myself. Probably should do that anyways. Let me uh, mark that and cut that off. All right, we're cutting off this little excess here. Love my Bosch shears. Everybody asks, what are those shears? It's a Bosch. This is the 12 volt one. I think they're up to 18 volts now. For some reason, uh, you have to have the secret uh, handshake to buy these things or something. You think Bosch would be making it easy to buy? No. You go on eBay, you got to buy them out of South Korea for some crazy reason. I don't know. But uh, if you look around on the internet, you'll find somebody who will be selling them, but they're not readily available. They're about 300, and 300 to 350 bucks. Well worth it. I don't even use my hand shears hardly at all anymore. That says now. Right. Okay, I'm a little loose right here, so I gotta bring that up a little bit. Maybe wheel that up a little. I gotta blend this in now. I got that edge all stretched out. I gotta blend it into the rest of the panel. And to blend it, what do you do? You do these 45s to blend it in. Why 45s? Well, if you go 90, you tend to fall off. This way here, you don't fall off the edge. Let's see what 
that looks like. There's still a little shine in there a little bit. I'm gonna mallet that a little, I think. Right there. that out and see what we got. Mm. It's getting nice and tight now, just about everywhere. And I think what I'll do is I'll put all the uh, gauge marking points on here and then start setting the arrangement and then we'll see what we got. It's pretty close now. Showing a little bit of looseness right here. Yeah, maybe pump that up just a little bit more right there. Just a little bit more. My surface quality looks pretty good. So, we're gonna stake and take and mark all this. And uh, we'll probably just show a little bit of it and then we'll cut and it'll be all marked when we come back. So what you do, this is where all the gauges go. So you just, uh, in the little holes here, just put a little dash like this. I'm on my, my, my home points here. So I got the gauges. The most important part is setting this valley here. We're going to set that on the post dolly. But right now, uh, let me get it all marked and I'll come back and it'll be all marked. Alright, we got the panel all marked now. We've got all where the gauge locations are going to be. And uh, just to show you, when it's in this arrangement here, the arrangement is way off. That's where that gauge goes, right there. And this is the relationship when you have it too much this way, you have to bend it this way and it will bring it up that way. So you can see here number 23 goes right here and that's got to come up that much. That doesn't have to be stretched up, that's now all arrangement now. So first thing we're going to do is we got to, this is our valley location, we got to bend this up and create more of the valley here which will straighten this out quite a bit. And then we 
got to roll this over. So I'm going to use my pair of gloves for that because it bites a little on the edges. And we'll give it a little push. If I can mark this valley on the other side, that'll be really good for me. So I'm going to take the pen and I'll hold my finger like this and just see sideways here a little bit and kind of match where my finger is. And we'll get a line going down here. So there's where the valley is supposed to be. And we're going to verify this by looking on the other side. We'll get that marked all the way here. There's your valley. So now we're going to use the uh, fulcrum block. All right, here's my fulcrum blocks. I make these little uh, fulcrum tool holders, and it's a one inch uh, ID bore, precision machine bore, and this is a uh, one inch OD cold roll steel which comes in pretty close so it's usually a nice fit you tighten up the little screw here and you can lock this at any height and you can spin it and this is a fulcrum block make it with a bandsaw and I grind it into the shape I want so uh, this wood is just skid wood we get a lot of skids with our metal comes in on skids so a lot of that uh, skid wood is off, often really nice hardwood so we, we take advantage of it and make these little fulcrum blocks. Now that becomes the fulcrum. The wood is hard, uh, so we soften it up with a little blanket, a little harbor freight moving blanket. And we put that on there like that. And we're going to push on that. As we push this down, we'll be setting that valley, and it'll, it'll change that curl will straighten out quite a bit. So it's still probably going to be a little reluctant to move here. So you got to, I made this one at a height that's good for me. I probably could lower it a little bit more so that um, you're not using your muscles, you're using just the weight of your upper body to push it down with. So I'm going to lower this a little bit. A lot of people try to use vices for these post dollies and the vices uh, they're really not a good way to do it because they rock the tool quite a bit. The tool will turn in it, they'll, they'll angle on you. This way here you can lock it solid, it'll stay there providing you get it tight enough. set that in there a little at a time you can't move it too much every time you put and you want to keep your hands close to where the fulcrum is otherwise you'll get too much of a uh, radius there you want some pretty tight radius that'll be set by the ultimately by the uh, the gauge I should have did a measurement here to see where we're at so there's a little pushing. We'll put our number 52 gauge back on here and see where we're at. We're at, we go all the way down here. This is the quantification. You always quantify what you got here. There's like three and three quarters of an inch or so. So I forgot what it was exactly before we pushed. We moved it a little bit, but let's try it a little bit more here. See if we can get that number to get a little bit better. <clears throat> now if this was 050 it would move a lot easier. Uh, if it was annealed it would move a lot easier. So you gotta wrestle with it a little bit. <sighs> that one did. Alright, 
that moved it a little bit, probably about three quarters of an inch, not as much as I'd like. Let's try the edge of the bag here. Maybe we can get a little bit better action right here. We got a nice soft fulcrum here. See what that did. Get back over here. And that helped out a bunch. Down a little old, under three inches, I think. Now, let's see if I can do it this way. I'm gonna try different ways. Okay, that's a lot better. See that? I got a lot more uh, leverage there. I think. <coughs> Okay, that was a lot better. Now what do we got? Now we're down to an inch and a half. Remember all of this stuff gives you a fight. It's not a slam dunk. It's always a fight. Especially when you got this really stiff aluminum. It was wheeling a lot nicer, but it's still stiff in your in your arrangement. Now we're down to about an inch. Let's go back to the fulcrum block. See if that'll move it. I call that the barking panel. Don't worry about that. Okay, now we're at three quarters of an inch. A little bit more. Let's try it once more this way. Now we're down to about five eighths of an inch. And now let's see what these say. That's 23. And that's getting pretty close. You can see we still got to come up a little bit more. So. Maybe we'll try it this way. Number 52. Oh, still got that little bit. Now, try it back over here. Okay, yeah, about a half an inch now. Let's see what the other ones look like. 23, 
We got that little bit there. This is almost there. 21. Goes in the front here. That's looking pretty good. This is going to come up, see, a little bit more there. 24. Right here. Same deal. So we still got to bring that valley up. 25. 25 is a long. Where is 25? Right here. All right, 25 is this. Yeah, so that's got to. That'll be affected a lot. That's way out right now. So, a little bit more here. That moved. What happens if you go too much? Not a big problem. It's easy to fix. I might have went a little bit too much right there. Let's see. 52. 52 goes right there. Okay, so 52 is just about there now. And 25 is much better. I got a little oil can right there. So that means I got to release that on the edge right there. But let's take, now we've got the arrangement pretty close. We're in the ballpark. Let's see if we're deficient anywhere. That's actually looking pretty good. So, that's all fitting pretty nicely. We have surface quality we got to check, and we have the arrangement to fine tune. That's the next two things we have to do. So let's uh, let's see if we can dial the arrangement in with the gauges on this side.